you need to look on these corners right here and they'll have the paint knocked off them a little bit and all I do is just take a little sharpie oh yeah oh man it looks way freaking better all right now for the speedometer we're gonna get the housing ready Put the, make sure these little rubber grommets are in there all right got the rubber grommets in there let me get our speedometer ready just got this piece right here goes either way then it's gonna have this blue cover over it it's got a little alignment tab or whatever and this clip right here for your, hold your speedometer cable down just goes in there like that all right get this ready as soon as you set it down all right so you're gonna have to set it on the speedometer just for a little bit just to get your whole stuff your bolt your screw started these are the original screws that's what they look like quarter inch head just get these started all right so just those two screws just snug them up pretty good Put the clock in. No man, the clock is it's got that freaking needle thing on it. The, it's got that adjuster rod so man, you can't play no games with it. It's pretty strong, but still man, you don't want to bend that. So just be careful with that freaking clock thing. Uh but once he goes in there, man, you're gonna have to be very careful. Just get the screw started at first for these because you might some of them are gonna have to be taken off of the circuit board so just get it just get it on there uh, the tack okay Yeah, we're gonna have to take these one of these back out again, so let's get it started in there for right now. Now you have your gauges. And that's why you want to get those foams in there now because you want to get those foam things in there first because now you you're gonna be hard to get them in there. Okay, so now we're gonna join them together. Try not to touch any of the black. You don't want fingerprints on there that show. We're going to try to join these two together. Watch that clock rod thing. There's tabs, alignment tabs. Alright. Be careful, man. That clock rod still sticks through there. Little puny screws. Quarter inch head. Be careful with these, man. You could screw your freaking plastic housing up pretty bad if you put the wrong screws. We're just going to snug them in there for right now to get it holding. And do not even try to tighten these down, man. Just snug these little screws up because you'll, you'll strip them or bust the case. All right, we just got it snugged up for right now. set you some kind of thing up to, to get your housing because you got that freaking clock needle man you do not want to have it on that clock needle line go ahead and put these the rest of your little screws on it just showing you these screws man it's very important very light it's light hand torque if you wonder why I go over all the screws see because this guy he didn't care what kind of screw he put in there he busted this housing busted this housing busted the housing cracked the housing and now this it's a good one but it's just uh, not perfect anymore so that's why I go over those screws man 
All right, got those in there. There's uh, five of them. Water tamp and gas gauge. So this is a dummy light gauge conversion, I forgot to tell you. So the kit I bought was uh, the TAC and the three gauges. Sorry, this just goes in place. Same puny little screws. All right, amp meter. Same puny screws. We haven't tightened nothing down yet because we need to get our printed circuit board on there find out what we're gonna have to take off because you're gonna ground this too so this comes in the kit this is why you have to buy the kit because the the dummy light circuit board is, is not the same all right so what I do with this when I'm getting this on here these are my little uh, dash light sockets and if you can see they look like they're brand new they were just dipped in barium and chem dip for 24 hours it really does bring them back to, to brand new. Well, pretty close. And uh, usually uh, put put a couple on these on here just to get get that held down. Okay, see, that's why we didn't tighten it because now we're gonna take this off to ground it. Now anytime one of these bolts is being used as a ground or one of these little screws, anytime you're grounding the circuit board to the housing that's going to have these little washers in there, it's all factory stuff. See because this bolt, the screw grounds the housing. See how that screw grounds the circuit board? That's why it's going to use that washer. Snug them down, man. Don't, don't over tighten them. You'll strip them. Okay, so see, we got another ground right here. Just want you to understand this stuff, man. Since this is grounding, we're using the little washer. Snug. Okay, we got one more up here. Oh, yeah, we got one right here. Dang. Uh, amp meter. So, we got the ground. Okay, so we're gonna do the amp meter and the tack, how to screw it down. Okay, so the tack has like these super tiny nuts on there. And uh, I'm just using a 730 seconds. I don't know if that's right or not. Using little tiny washers. Tack only has two. All right, now for the amp meter. Well, I had some, but. Now these are 5 sixteenths. Now you want this one kind of tight. Well, a little bit tight because it is your freaking amp meter, so. For this side. This one is the one that gets kind of stupid. On your old gas gauge, you have a resistor, and on the new gas gauge, supposedly it has that in it has the resistor resistor inside there on a, some kind of wire. I don't know. So this one, you do not it does not have a resistor, but you're gonna take the resistor off the old gas gauge, and you're gonna put it vertically on the temperature gauge. Got one more grounding thing. So mine stripped right there, so I gotta use the stupid Phillips. It's a ground, so it's important, kinda tight. Alright, 516, let's just tighten this up.
All right, now for mounting this vertically. So for this, I'm gonna run two down where they're all even like this. Put this on. Fucking mosquitoes, dude. Hold this down. Okay. Now for the resistor, I'm just gonna put a piece of tape because I don't want it. All right, so here we, we got all that ready. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on the resistor. Okay, that's all I did. But that is vertically on the temperature gauge, so. We went through everything, everything seems tight. Now we're gonna take our little things out right here and put bulbs in them. So all the connectors are dipped in Berryman Chem Dip, and it brings them back to new. And uh, I'm using brand new 194 bulbs. Just go buy you the whole box. I think it's about two boxes. Let's do the car. All right, got them all in there. Okay, now we're gonna test this. We're gonna bench test this and make sure this goes on, that this works before we put it in the car. Okay, so we're gonna bench test this cluster, uh, make sure all the lights work. You need to make you a little key. This is a 70 to 72. Um, so you're not gonna be testing all, the, all of them. Okay, so those are just the ones we're gonna test. These two circuits are run backwards. They ground out. So that's what this means. You'll see. Be aware of that. To test the brake light and the oil pressure light, this would normally be hot because the way those switches work is they ground it out, energizing the light. So we're just gonna, for the test, we're just gonna ground right here. Okay, so the first test is the left turn signal. It's not blinking, I'm just, okay, the left turn signal looks good. See, there's no light leaking through to the other gauges. That's why you want to check this. Now the right turn signal, no light bleeding through the other gauges. Looks good. Bra uh, dash lights. These have always looked crappy like that. They, they're just going to be dim, but. Go ahead and go through them in depth if you want to, but you really can't see them, but they're on. Uh, bright. That's dim anyway. Okay. Now we're gonna do that reverse brown thing. Now we're gonna test the oil dummy light. Okay, that's good. Uh, the brake, it's just, it doesn't have the red thing in it, but. Test fit the switch. Gently put it in there. Go, this has already been cleaned really good. I'm gonna just put tiny drops of super glue on it. Just hold it down. We're gonna test the clock, make sure it works. In my clock, I'm gonna rewire the harness part where it comes on with the key. I don't want this clock running 24 hours a day and doing what the old clock did, melting the points. So we're just gonna bump it real hot like if I were to turn my car on. And let's see if this clock works like in my video. I'm hoping it does, so it's just supposed to come to life.
And it did. So if we would have turned the car on. Um, this clock's been sitting up for three or four months. No, two or three months. And uh, we would just adjust the time like I talked about in the freaking video. So what time is it right now? Like three. So every time we drive it, we're going to have to do this, but it's fine. Just to have it working in there, man, that's uh, pretty cool. 